What's going on, everybody? It is February 8th, Thursday slate. We've got six games uh, on the docket tonight. And if we get lucky, uh, we won't have a stadium leakage problem. So I ate dicks last night. Lucky me. Um, I'm sure a bunch of people can... Uh, oh, we're still live. I forgot. Uh, I'm sure a bunch of people can relate to this. But... I had Drew Holiday, Miritich, and Miles Turner. So, yeah, not the best start. Um, you know, Teague was great. I just needed more of that game. Uh, you would think in a 140 to 138 game that Wiggins could have more than uh, 20.9 fantasy points, but I thought he was in the smash spot. Um, you know, I, I would have liked a little bit more out of Ish. Uh, but, you know, got close to value. Teague blew it up. Wiggins was terrible. Tamari Carroll blew it up. Kyle Anderson was terrible. Blake Griffin was meh. Um, I really thought Kyle Anderson was in a great spot and a, a perfect guy to differentiate with last night. It's just, you know, he played 20 minutes and the Suns are just terrible. Should have known better. But none of it matters because I had a third of my salary taken up with guys that didn't play. It's frustrating. It happens. It There's no way for it to, like, I'm not mad. You know, you can't control it. It's not as if um, anyone's, like, actively doing that to you. It affects everybody equally. It just happens to affect some people more because they have more guys. But it just sucks. Hopefully something comes out and they play today and the points count and Miles Turner goes nuts because he's low-owned. But... Otherwise, I think I just got to, you know, take it on the chin and say, screw it. I assume that some people are pumped. Uh, you know, lots of people faded it. And if you did, you probably ended up with more dudes on Minnesota and um, in Cleveland, which was exactly where you needed to be. So I don't, I don't have anything else really to say. I, I wish I were more pissed, but it doesn't even bother me. Once you set, once you click send and put that lineup in, it's just out of your hands. So, sorry to everybody else who's like one guy away from winning a GPP or something. Those are the frustrating scenarios. Like if you had 320 points and you already and you still had Drew Holiday left, you're probably not happy. What are you gonna do? Let's dive in. Um, I'm gonna play at DK tonight, actually. So if anybody's interested in that. Um, just going to mix it up. Got to get the sour taste of FanDuel out of my mouth these past two days. Uh, first game up is Magic hosting the Hawks. Uh, Magic have a 108.5 implied total, which is fourth. Um, they are uh, three-point favorites at home. No, um, no Aaron Gordon, and it's possible that uh, Vooch plays tonight, uh, which would be fun. I've got him in for 28 minutes right now. He's questionable. Um, be interesting to see him come back. Uh, he was playing really well earlier in the season, so let's dive in. First up is Evan Fournier. Oh, uh, not that um, I have a lack of tabs or anything in here, but trying to condense my view a little bit. So taking a look at implied totals and all of the different little dvp things that you know i use as guide posts so trying to find out games that are um better to look at just based on you know higher pace higher total bad defense so it's basically uh take a look at oklahoma city and then stack the orlando atlanta game which is terrifying so fournier is first up Ooh, i'm gonna have to save this and open it again so i found out that for some reason, the lag in the spreadsheet comes from just being open and doing stuff. It's like it's not clearing itself. So let's save that and close it, and then open it back up again. Not that you guys care. Just, you guys are probably sitting there like, just do the damn video. I'm trying. All right, Fournier, 6,200 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Uh, I'm going to change that filter. Not a huge fan of Fournier tonight. 
Uh, looks a little bit better on FanDuel than he does on DK. What do we need? 31. If he took more mid-range shots, I'd be a little bit more interested, as weird as that sounds. He's just a four for me. I'm not, I don't think that he's the spot where the value lies. Jonathan Simmons, um, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Coming off the, the monster against Cleveland. Um, still needs to get to like 30, which, I mean, he basically doesn't do ever. Uh, he's a four just because of the matchup. Uh, Mario Hazonia. 5,400 and 5,300. I can't seem to ever get that dude right. Uh, I feel like if Vooch plays, that's better for Hazonia, though. Just as, like, a floor spacer. You know, a little bit more movement from Vooch than, you know, someone like Biombo. Might naturally uh, pull some gravity away. So I'm going to say that I actually think Hazonia is a three, and that's mostly just positionally. Now, Vooch is the interesting one to take a look at. Uh, 8,200 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. Um, he's not coming back from, like, a ligament injury, so I think that if he's going to play, like, he should get, like, a decent allotment of minutes. I've got him in for 28. If he plays 28, um, he, he looks pretty good for that DraftKings salary. So what I'm going to do is say, and this is going to be crazy, he's a DK2 to me. Playing Atlanta, Atlanta, nothing spectacular defensively. Uh, Vooch, obviously good. Um, now, he's got to be on the floor first and foremost, but he's 7,000. He's probably the most talented player in the entire game. If uh, if he suits up, so really like him on DK. Uh, less interested in Fanduel at 8200, but you know worth a peek at least. Then last guy I'd like to look at is Shelvin Mack, or maybe not last, but someone I like to look at is Shelvin Mack. Uh, Mack is 3600 on DraftKings. I've got him in for 25 minutes. Um, you can say that he's a four on Fanduel and a three on DK. He's just been playing more, been playing decent, you know, put up 26 fantasy points uh, two nights ago against Cleveland, but he's got 26, 23, 29, 27. Um, all of those are, you know, at 4,000, 6x is 24 for DK. He's been hitting that constantly, so definitely worth a look. Um, he'll help uh, make things fit. Go to Atlanta now. Uh, Hawks, 105.5 implied total, which would be sixth. Um, going to be uh, interesting to keep an eye here. Who knows who Atlanta is going to unload at the deadline. Same for Orlando. Um, so much of this could be up in the air just based on trades. Uh, Bellinelli is sitting out. That's, I'm pretty sure, locked in at this point. But uh, you have to assume that Atlanta's got a ton of guys. Yeah. All right, Bellinelli didn't play Tuesday because of the trade talk, so you wouldn't expect him to play again today. Uh, first up is going to be Schroeder, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. Um, it's 38. Minutes have been, uh, you know, 25 in the Cleveland game. I don't know why I'm saying Cleveland. That was Orlando. 25 in their last game. It's kind of scary. I've got him back up to 30. That's a big number for him. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in it. I'm going to say that he's a four, and that's just because of the matchup. Bazemore, 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Um, not a huge fan here either. Needs 32 for value. Gets there from time to time. 
Um, yeah, again, um, I don't think they're going to pop. That's the scary thing. Bays more, bays more, bays more. What do I, what do I think here? How's he done against Orlando in the past? I haven't even refreshed that. Or have I? Oh, wrong window. That's the one. Ah, uh, Baysmore. Went ham sandwich on them in December. Now he's $1,000 more expensive. Yeah, he's just a four for me. Torian Prince. 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Um, needs like 20 something. Ugh. He's just so bad. I don't want to type your name, it's too long. Just a four. Again, uh, it's hard to get excited about Atlanta. I hope that, you know, two or three guys get dealt and uh, value opens up here. Now, Tyler Dorsey, 3,900 on FanDuel, 3,500 on DK. We should expect him to get a decent amount of run with Bellinelli out. I've got him at 26 minutes. Um, and if that's the case, I think he's a pretty decent punt. Yeah, I'm going to say that he's just a straight three. It's 3,500, minimum salary on DK, uh, 3,900 on FanDuel. Or, sorry, flip that. It's 3,500 on DK, 3,900 on FanDuel. Not minimum salary on DK. Um, Ilyasova, Deadman, Collins. I mean, you can roll the dice on any of those guys, really. I just... Collins got 26 minutes in this last one. 25 a couple nights ago. I'm going to say Collins is a 3. On DK. No. Ah, uh, just... Yeah, John Collison. I, I am the worst typer. Let's make it a four across the board. I, I can't get too crazy over a guy that I'm projecting for 21 minutes. Yeah, we'll go to Toronto now. Raptors, 111.5 implied total is second. A lot of these games don't have lines, by the way. These are all just mostly made up. Uh, I've got them as 11-point favorites at home against the Knicks. Um, obviously, the Knicks are without Porzingis. Um, also, no Cantor. And... Uh, they might even be uh, without Kylo Quinn if this trade deadline goes in an interesting direction. They're certainly not going to play Willie Hernan Gomez. DeMar DeRozan, 8,400 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. Needs 42. He's done that quite a few times, four times in the past two weeks. I feel like DeMar probably loves playing in New York. Hmm. Would have expected more there. Um, I mean, DeMar should be able to do whatever he wants to do. He's a three for me. Um, looks like Kyle Lowry's salary no longer low. Up another thousand from wherever it was. Yep. Two games at seven, all the way up to eight. So Lowry needs 40. Um, I'm not super excited about that. What does Lowry think of playing in New York? He's a Philly guy. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's enjoyed it. Would have liked him at that 7,000 price point. Um, I would prefer Lowry to DeRozan, I think. Oh, man, I don't know. Yeah, I think I would. If, they're, if the Knicks are going to be playing more... The more they play Trey Burke, the more I like Kyle Lowry. Let's put it that way. Serge Ibaka price went up, still bad. Five thousand on Fanduel, fifty-four hundred on DK. <sighs> Might be time to cut his minutes a little bit. Might have to do that right now. Let's do that. Let's dial Ibaka back to twenty-six. We'll bring Siakam up to twenty-one. Yeah, I like that a little bit more. Um, look, if you want to play Surge in a GPP, I get it. 
hoping that he becomes Serge Ibaka, but if he's not playing 30-plus minutes, um, he's just not been very good lately. Jonas. Now, this one could be interesting. He's 6,600 on FanDuel, but he's 5,700 on DK. Played 21 minutes in the last one. Has been smashing value, but if there's no canter, they're either going to go small or... Jonas is just going to be able to beast. So I'm going to say that Jonas is a 4 for me on FanDuel just because of the single center um, and a 3 on DK because I think that he could be an interesting fit in a 2 center lineup. Siakam, 4,000 on FanDuel, 3,700 on DK. Uh, I'm just not confident enough that he's going to get a bunch of minutes. If I knew that he were going to play 25, he would be in line, but I've got him in for 21, so it's hard to really dive in. Knicks. Ooh, boy. Going to be some value in this one, which is weird considering this game is atrocious for them. Courtney Lee, 5,100 and 5,500. Uh, well, first and foremost, let's... Let me pull up the Knicks. What do we know about Cantor? Yeah, will not play. So 100% no Cantor. 100% no Cantor, 100% no Porzingis, obviously. Uh, it's just going to have to be Beasley. Um, Courtney Lee, I'm not really interested in at that price. But it's shooting guard, so sometimes you need to make some concessions. Uh, Lee's going to get all the minutes he can handle, you would expect. So I've got him in for 34. He needs 25 fantasy points. Um, he's not really the guy that I would expect to just take over because of this. So I'm going to say he's a 4. All the value is going to be uh, coming up shortly. Tim Hardaway, isn't he hurt? Not on the injury report. Okay. Uh, Tim Hardaway is 6,000 on FanDuel. 6,400 on DK, so you're looking for 30. Um, I don't ever trust him, but I think that he has to be one of the people that benefits the most from uh, from the Porzingis injury, and Cantor, for that matter. Um, I'm hoping that Hardaway becomes someone that is uh, you know, trying to score the basketball instead of looking like he's just standing on the side for more than the game. He's just, every time I watch him, he just looks so disinterested. Except for when a game where he, like, is feeling himself. Now, everybody knows this one. Michael Beasley, uh, 6,200 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. He's going to play 30-plus minutes. You guys remember him going ham when uh, Porzingis was out before. Beasley's just a straight two. Kylo Quinn. Um, he is going to, by all accounts, be the most chalky center on the board. 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. As long as he doesn't get traded, he's going to have to play like 25 minutes. Um, Kyle Quinn's a one. As long as you know that he's still on the Knicks after the trade deadline, uh, Kyle Quinn's the best center on the board. Um, Jarrett Jack. 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. Played 17 minutes in the last one. It's hard to get super excited about it, but he also played 32 minutes a couple nights ago. Uh, I don't really know how to hash out the point guard situation, although I do know this much. I wouldn't play Jarrett Jack and Trey Burke 20 minutes a game each, and I'd probably play, play uh, Frankie Smokes a little bit more. So, knowing the Knicks, they'll probably go the other direction. But why wouldn't you play your rookie and get him as many minutes as you can? Why the hell would you keep playing shitty Trey Burke and shitty Jarrett Jack? All respect to Jarrett Jack. Great career. But play the rook, man. Play the rook. You can play Jarrett Jack on FanDuel, I guess. Uh, Trey Burke, 3,600 and 3,800. I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't go Lance Thomas or Doug McDermott. Pay attention to find out if they get any of those D-League centers in. But as of right now, it's just sort of the Kyle O'Quinn show. Wizards. 
Wizards, 104 implied total. I've got them as two-point favorites at home against Boston. Um, I think that line is real, actually. That's not the right link. I think that there were two lines that were legit. Yeah, Wizards line is legit, and the Charlotte-Portland line is legit. All right, so first up is Beal. This is obviously a terrible, terrible matchup for a fantasy game. Uh, Beal, 8,600 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. I don't like Beal at all. And because I don't like Beal at all, I assume that he's going to go for 50 because I take him on smash spots when he's uh, when he gets 20, and I don't take him when he puts up 53 or 67. So suck it, Bradley Beal. Just suck it. I'll say Beal's a four. Um, I don't really have much interest in Otto Porter. He needs 33. Uh, can get there from time to time, but this is just not that sort of game. I don't expect a ton of fantasy points just in general. Markeith Morris, 6,306,000. ,006, I don't like that, really. Um... Although Celtics do give up a ton of mid-range stuff. I'll say Markeith Morris is a four. Bad. Oh, Morris brothers collide. Should be interesting. They should switch jerseys. And just play as the opposite person for the night. No thanks on Ubre or Sadoransky or Gorta. I, there's nothing that... It's hard to like anything on Washington right now. They're priced like two hundred dollars higher than they should be across the board, and that's a terrible matchup. Boston, one hundred two implied total is eleventh out of twelve. So first up is Horford, uh, seventy four hundred on Fanduel, seventy four hundred on DK. I actually kind of like it. We know Boston and Washington have a hate-hate uh, relationship with each other. Where's Horford? There we go. Played well against them on Christmas. Yeah, I'd be okay with some Horford. It's just a three. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. I feel like I just need to look at both of these guys in the exact same way. They're both, uh, they both need like 26 for value. Um, I'd feel a little bit more comfortable with Jalen Brown, I think. More upside in uh, Jason Tatum. Don't really care for either of them tonight. I'd be more likely to take Tatum in cash and Brown in a GP. Nope, flip that. I'd be more likely to take Brown in a, in cash and Tatum in GPPs. So, Kyrie, eight thousand on Fanduel, seventy nine hundred on DK. Is there uh, any Kyrie news? Nope. Needs forty. Played twenty two minutes in his first game back from injury. Um, I assume he's going to get full run here, but I've only got him in for 31 minutes. Um, he should be so much faster than Sadoransky. I actually like Kyrie pretty decently tonight. I'm going to put him at a three. Um, I wouldn't mind if he ended up as one of my point guards. It might be hard to pull off just because of where the value is tonight, but I think he's in a really good. He's got a really good shot. Then we take a two-hour break between Wizards and Celtics and head to the late games, which ugh, I don't like that monster gap. It does make it easier to uh, like put yourself in line of where you think you're going to finish because if you've got a bunch of guys here, you can kind of gauge yourself. All righty. Portland, 108.25 implied total is fifth. They are three-and-a-half-point favorites at home against the Hornets. Um, who knows who's on the Hornets by the time this game happens, so that'll be something to keep an eye on. 
Uh, first up is going to be Dame, 9,200 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DraftKings. He needs 46 to hit value. He's done that twice straight away uh, in the past two weeks. He also had two you know, m- low to mid 40s games. Not sure this is the best matchup at that price. I'll say that he's a four for me. CJ McCollum is 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. So here looking for 35 there. Uh, Three straight games, not so great. Had the big 59-point outburst. Three games before that were in the 30s. Um, I actually like this game for CJ. I'm going to say that he's a three. I prefer CJ to Dame tonight, Um, you know, adjusting for price. Aminu at 5,500 or 5,300, uh, not for me. I try to only go for Aminu on games where I think that he can bomb some threes or get some turnovers, and uh, you know, Charlotte's generally decent with the ball. Uh, Nurkic, 6,500 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. I mean, you would think that Nurkic, this should be a spot where Nurkic is going to need to play a little bit more. Uh, there's no shortage of big men in Charlotte right now between Hernan Gomez, Dwight, Cody Zeller. Um, so if Nurkic needs 32, you know, he's hit that three times in the last two weeks. Really boom and bust, but I think that he's, our, he's worth a really close look in uh, GPPs tonight. Evan Turner is 3,500 on FanDuel. Um, assuming that he plays... You know, he does have very big crater possibility, but at 3500 if you need a guy that at minimum salary, I think that that is worth a peek. Uh, could open things up for you, especially at his position. You know, it's, if he was a $3,500 center, it would be different, but um, that could allow you to do some things tonight. Uh, Napier is 3600 There's another guy where... If you're really it's looking to squeeze value in a GPP, um, I can see him being a landing spot. Don't have much interest in Ed Davis, though. So we'll go to Charlotte. Uh, Hornets. 104.75 implied total is eighth. Um, just keep an eye on it, you know, to see if Kemba is still on this team, to see if Nick Batum is still on this team, to see if Dwight is still on this team. Oh boy, they dropped Dwight's salary. Dwight on FanDuel down to 8,200. Oh, Nelly. All right, we'll start with Kemba. Kemba, 8,300 on FanDuel, 8,400 on DraftKings. Um, I just. It's so weird to me. He's solid cash play, but I'm, I don't find. Well, you know, it's not a horrible matchup. It's not like Dame is some sort of uh, savant on D. <laughs> I wouldn't have Kemba on DraftKings, but I think that he looks pretty good on FanDuel. Uh, Nick Batum, 6700 and 6600 That's a really good spot for Batum. I'm going to say he's a three on FanDuel again and a four on DK. Yeah. Now, Dwight. This one's the one that's interesting to me. 8,200 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. You need 41 from Dwight. He's had these two 29ers, but, I mean, he's got so much upside in that number. I'm just going to say he's a straight three. As of right now, he looks... If it wasn't for Kyle O'Quinn, Dwight would look like a pretty tasty center. (laughs) MKG, 4,200 and 4,300. Seems like the perfect game for MKG. Um, Needs 21 for value. Not that he's going to be, like... He's just sort of the mid-tier guy that I probably like the most today. 
like a guy, you know, 42, like in that low fours range, he'd be somebody I focused on um, at that particular position. It's always hard to find something there. And if you wanted to go like really weird and went like Turner and MKG, you could probably fit in a bunch of bigger stuff around the boards. Around the boards? What does that even mean? I'm just rambling. Hold on. I gotta get some spinach. Popeye's, Popeye's got spinach. I've got coffee 24-7. Marvin Williams is supposed to be back tonight. Um, I don't really have a ton of interest in him. But that also removes any interest in Kaminsky. And uh, that removes any interest in talking about the rest of this game. To the Warriors. Warriors hosting the Mavs. I've got the Warriors as 12-point favorites and the number one implied total. Um, we know what we're looking at here. So let's just copy all five names for now since we know they're all in play. Draymond is 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. Um, it's a good spot for Draymond. I'm just going to say three. Kevin Durant, 10,5 on FanDuel, 10,000 flat on DK. So he needs 52... Barnes is questionable. Yeah, I could. I like Durant there. That's another three. Clay Thompson, sixty-five hundred on Fanduel, uh, sixty-three hundred on DK. Needs thirty-two. It's not a bad matchup for Clay Thompson. Another three. I just, it's just, it's hard to go crazy over these guys. 9,800 and 9,900 for Steph. So you're looking for 50. Uh, Steph is probably my least favorite of the guys in here now. And then Iguodala. Uh, he's just a four. So if I had to rank my interest in uh, Golden State, guys, I would go Durant, Clay, Draymond, Curry with Iguodala. You know, not really on the on the docket. I think Clay is in an interesting spot tonight. And if Harrison Barnes is out, even more so. Um, I've got Barnes in for right now because he's questionable. That's just sort of how I do it. But if Barnes ends up sitting, keep an eye. Uh, so Barnes is 6,000, 6,400 on DK. So that would be 30 for Barnes. Um, hasn't done it in his last four but does have that ability. You would think he would want to... How has he been against Golden State? Never anything crazy. Yeah, I'm going to say that he's a three if he plays. Wesley Matthews, 5,800 on both sides. Uh, put up 40 in Harrison Barnes' absence. Needs 30. He's done that quite a few times recently. Picking it up to make sure he's still on the team, but um, he's a four for me. Dennis Smith, 6,500 on both sites. Uh, that's 32. I'm not a huge fan, but I'll say that he's a four. Yogi Ferrell, 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Ah, man. Same. I'm going to say that he's a four. Dwight Powell, 4,500 on DraftKings is pretty interesting. Put up 27 and 31 in his last two. Um, I'm going to say Dwight Powell is just a three. No interest in Dirk or Berea. Actually, J.J. Berea is probably a four. Finally, the last game on the slate, the one that's probably the most interesting from a fantasy perspective, which is absolutely terrifying. Los Angeles Lakers hosting the Oklahoma City Thunder. I have the Thunder as four-point favorites on the road. Uh, Lakers 105 implied total would be seventh. 
so let's start with Brandon Ingram. 7,100 on FanDuel. 6,500 on DK. 7,100 needs 35. Uh, he's done that one, two, three, four out of his last six games. Uh, the problem is I think this is the, an absolutely dreadful matchup for him. I'm going to say that he's a four. I don't expect to have him. Josh Hart, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. Uh, he's put up 30 in basically his last three. He's had mid-30s or higher. Uh, but at that price, I don't see the value. Um, he's a four. Uh, Julius Randle, 7,300 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Uh, this is not the best matchup for Julius Randle. I'm not even going to look at him. Uh, I will say, yeah, I'm not even going to look at him. I'm going to stick to what I just said. KCP, 4,700 and 4,800. Uh, needs 24. Cantavius Caldwell Pope. I wish I didn't have such a weird thing in me where I need to make sure their names are capitalized correctly. I'm going to say he's a three. Uh, the one guy I want to look at is probably Brooke Lopez. 5,300 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. I've got him in for 26 minutes. Um, keep an eye on this game to see if, you know, Randall or Clarkson or anything goes out the door. Uh, Brooke Lopez is just a four for me. <laughs> Kyle Kuzma at 4,700 is kind of interesting. Uh, played 27 minutes in the most recent game. If he's going to get a little bit more minutes, uh, he becomes more appealing. I'm going to say that he is a 4 on FanDuel. And then the crown jewel of the day is the last team we look at, Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, I'm anticipating Carmelo to play for right now, but certainly possible that he doesn't so keep an eye there Paul George is 8600 on FanDuel and 8800 on DraftKings um, have they played it all this year I'd like to know how he's done in his showcase oh yeah they played fucking four days ago put up 40 okay and they lost okay so they're gonna come in hot too I don't generally believe in narratives like that. So Paul George needs 43. He's done that. He's at, you know, 63, 61, 51. Uh, I think Paul George is a three pretty pretty handily. Uh, Russ is 12-1 on FanDuel, 11-9 on DK. Put up 51 against them a couple nights ago. Hard to not like him here. Also a three. Uh, given the choice between the two, um, I think I would prefer Russ. Uh, but Steven Adams put up 35 against them a couple nights ago. Uh, he's 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Um, he should look great. Again, another three. None of their prices just scream out like, crush me, but... They're all in play. I want to have at least two of these guys. Um, I want to have at least two of George Westbrook and Adams. Probably George and Westbrook. And finally, Mello, 6,000 and 6,200. He put up 34 on them. Uh, if he plays, he's a three. Just something you want to keep an eye on. So we'll start off on FanDuel. But uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm actually going to play on DK tonight. Just kind of want to mix it up. Uh, so let's upload. And copy. We'll be going live tonight. So come tune in at 6. see what we got yeah that makes sense just because of the trade deadline and sort of the way the value is out there tonight I just kind of want to mix it up a little bit more with DK 
because so many people are going to be on O'Quinn and Beasley, and it's just it's very rigid on FanDuel. So, like I said, O'Quinn, Beasley, let's grab Russ, let's grab Paul George. Um, is there any Hawks or Magic guys out there that land perfectly? I guess you would want to go Fournier, Tyler Dorsey. Yeah, so like, I'm not super keen on Ed Davis, but you know, something like that looks good. Russ, Dorsey, McCollum, Fournier, George, Beasley, Draymond, Ed Davis, Kyle O'Quinn. I'd be fine with that. If you wanted to rejigger that, you know, you can go to Collins. But I would start sort of in that realm of locking in Russ, George, Beasley, O'Quinn, and then I would try to find some Hawk Orlando guys to fill in around that. I think that would be my first planned build. We'll go to DK, see how that looks. Should look partially similar and partially different, as weird as that sounds. Because the Knicks uh, value is going to translate regardless, or at least it should. Bump up the rando. Hundy spot me. Calc. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> ton of Quinn, ton of Beasley, ton of Shelvin Mack. A lot of Vooch. So let's grab O'Quinn. Let's grab Beasley. Let's grab Shelvin Mack. Let's grab Tyler Dorsey. Sort by projected. I like Vooch, but I, I'm not, I don't. That's not a focus of mine. I like Dwight Powell. So something like this could be interesting. Yeah, Russ, Shelvin Mack, Beasley, O'Quinn, Nurkic, Dorsey, Powell, and Curry. Love it. Um, Curry and Durant instead of Russ. Yeah. There's a lot more uh, interesting stuff to be done on DK tonight, I think. But that's it for me, guys. Uh, like I said, I'll be back tonight at 6, live before lock. Check me out on uh, Twitter or Reddit. F uh, like and subscribe the video. And um, I'll see you guys in a couple hours. Bye-bye. Oh, have a fun trade deadline. Bye.